So today we're going to cover a bit of a controversial topic, which is uh, playing defense in Postscriptum. Um, now, a lot of new players, and actually um, the player base at large, feels that playing defense is overwhelming and that the Zerging meta is currently too strong. Uh, the Zerging meta consists of uh, the offense being able to get to points before the defense does. They're able to teleport ahead to uh, forward operating bases, and they're able to... Uh, spawn in a lot of vehicles and drive really fast to the next point uh, before the defense is already set up. Um, but what I've noticed over time, especially as a 1300 hour veteran, is that good teams with a lot of good players and a lot of veterans on them actually tend to play defense at a really high level and they're able to play defense on almost every point and uh, stop the offense from uh, steamrolling them. Now, that's not always the case, uh, but more often than not, they're able to fight more at a 50-50 uh, win rate with the uh, defense uh, than bad teams do. Now we're going to look at some points here uh, for why the defense gets steamrolled. So point number one is single FOP setup on defense. Point number two is uh, the defense is playing on point. There's no 360 perimeter defense. Number three, spawn hunters playing on point and not flanking. Number four, taking predictable MSP routes and placing predictable spawns. Number five, not replenish replenishing spawns fast enough. Number six, not setting up flank MSPs or flank spawns. And number seven, Logi not having supplies ready at multiple locations to get FOBs set up uh, as soon as possible when FOBs get destroyed so the defense can recover. <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna look at is the single FOB setup on defense. Now here, um, this is on Grave and the old tower layer, and we can see that there's just a single FOP setup on defense. Now you might say, well, there's two MSBs nearby, but it's not a good thing because you can see the proximity of these spawns makes it really easy for them to just spawn hunt um, these two spawns in particular. This is also a very bad MSP as well. It's a very predictable location, which takes us to point number four. So number one and number four are actually tied hand in hand here. Uh, this FOB, you know, it ended up serving us well in the long run in this game because they had just completely forgotten about it um, when they took this point and the Logi team was able to get it back up and we were just uh, streaming out of it and we were able to defend Kirk and then um, uh, win the point. But what we can see here is that this FOB is going to be taken, which you'll see in the next video, because it's a single FOB uh, setup. And my rally is already hot because it's quite uh, predictable that the offense is not just going to hit you from a front line, but bad teams don't anticipate that you're just going to end up getting uh, flanked from behind. So they have these two small bridges here. They took an MSP or an FOB through here. They probably set up a spawn here. They went through the town, put up a rally, and then they're going to take out your two main spawns. Now, as soon as they take this, uh, you're going to have these rallies here along the trench lines, which um, the defense thinks are safe, but they're going to get taken out inevitably. So a good offensive team already knows exactly where their spawns are going to be, and they're going to go hunt them from the beginning of the game. They're not just going to frontline you. Uh, this isn't hell let loose. Um, a postscriptum, it's much uh, easier to have tactical play and get uh, 360 concave spawns and then take out the defensive spawns and get on point really fast. So it's a very fast paced game uh, once you understand the mechanics of how to play a good offense. Now, what I did here to save uh, some time for our team, because I knew this FOB was uh, uh, very risky, uh, was I flanked with my team because I noticed nobody was covering the bridge area. Um, and then we found an MSP on question mark and we're going to get on point shortly and you're going to pretty much see and this also takes us to uh, point number two the defense playing on point no 360 perimeter defense so generally for point number two you want to have an arc set up around the perimeter and what that does is it creates a second line of defense so if that line gets killed it then recedes back you respawn now you have another first line of defense what happens when you play all on point like this and you're concentrated one already strike or just uh, getting pushed in from multiple angles which is what's going to happen here shortly uh, makes it so you have no spawns, you have no rallies. Once you're dead, this spawn, uh, this uh, objective is taken and they're just able to move on to the next objective. So I already anticipated this and I bought my team some time by flanking around through here and getting behind them. And you're going to see that in the next clip. So here I am moving up and I'm taking out uh, the few guys on point that are capping right now.
So actually, just a moment ago at Flash, they were already half capped just with this Greyhound and the three guys that I had just killed. And I was able to save my, my team some time here on Old Tower and to help them to stabilize to hold on just for a bit longer so we can bleed some more tickets. Uh, but inevitably, they did actually take this point. I just want to show something here in a moment. Okay, so right there. So what you can see here, just as I mentioned, that predictable MSP, which uh, uh, many bad players will take those MSPs and put them in predictable areas uh, because they think, well, it's close to point, so it's safe. Uh, I mean, in postscriptum, the closer it is to point, the worse it is most of the time because they just know uh, that they can just hunt it, they can bomb it, and then they're just going to take the point really fast. Um, and again, we don't have any flank spawns set up anywhere, so we can uh, uh, get in from different angles and cut them off. Um, so pretty much my rally was hot. This FOB, which was right on the open, was taken out. It's being dug down right now. And then we had this MSP taken out. So as I mentioned, pretty much you can see they're about to take the point. Everybody here ends up getting wiped, and this point was taken shortly after. Now moving on to the next clip, this is on Carentan. Um, what you'll hear me saying in this clip is uh, I'm asking the, F the um, Logi team to set up a FOB. Uh, you can see it's already 30 minutes. Um, I believe it starts at around 45 minutes. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I don't recollect. But that means we had uh, approximately uh, 10 or 15 minutes with no FOB set up um, in this area anywhere. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, or as I'm going to mention, um, setting up... Uh, defensive spawns is really fast is really really important <clears throat> but we're quite delayed in the way we set up spawns you can see how late the second msp is uh no no rifleman no logi guy nobody sacrificed to bring up this uh second msp it's really really late this msp is in a really predictable spot they already have infantry on our back line they have a tank and some infantry here and they're already cutting this off and what you're going to see in the next clip after i ask for this fob is that um People are bringing in the MSPs through the most predictable route. I got you, I got you. Uh, we need a, we need a fob really bad. Lot of team. Okay, so right here, going on to the next clip, you can see I'm moving it, and now here we go. This is what happens now. Brought up an MSP. And this is just a consequence of not reading the map. And reading the map in postscriptum is so important, uh, even more so if you want to play a good defense. And you can see. He took this MSP, instead of moving it over to a flank area, which would have been a lot safer, he moved it towards a way riskier area. Uh, obviously, if you have good uh, good offensive players, even average offensive players, they'll understand that if I just sit on crossroads, you're just going to bring your lodges and your MSPs through this area if you're not good and you don't have good pattern recognition. And they're going to sit on it, they're going to kill all your guys, they're going to blow up your MSP, and then you're going to be down a few spawns for a long time. And this ended up creating a butterfly effect where we just got steamrolled as soon as they took out these two spawns. Because now we have to wait a couple minutes for new MSPs to come up, we have to bring them up again, and now they're cutting us off at other areas for those other MSPs. And again, we still don't have a FOB uh, up to this point, so the Logi team just was not doing their job. And having a good Logi team on defense... Uh, makes or breaks the game so once he took this uh, msp over here he was taken out this msp is now compromised but not only that they brought them a second gift which is hey we didn't even read the map we didn't even notice that this msp was taken out let us bring you another msp so you can take this one out as well so the proximity of the two spawns taking them through a very predictable route this is how you end up losing the game now you might ask well what should we have done in this scenario um, especially if you're somebody who's new to postscript them it's quite easy by comparison you have to get your fob set up really really fast you have to barricade it you have to protect it you have to have a squad dedicated to protecting it and then you bring up your msps on the flanks so you bring an msp through this angle you bring another msp through this angle you can hide it somewhere back here you got lots of buildings to hide it in there's lots of wooded areas back here you can even hide it back here bring it here and this allows your pioneers this allows your he logies this allows your ats to spawn in behind them and take out their spawn so they actually had uh they had an fob over here they had an msp they had one in the north and they were attacking us from all different angles and they got on point really fast um so because we didn't have any flank spawns we were not able to wipe their spawns and what you see here look you have an he logi sitting on point you have a my pioneer 
uh, from my squad sitting on point. Now, I was not the SL here, so I wasn't directing traffic. But in this case, this pioneer is not doing his job at all. He's not wiping spawns. He's just fighting on point. He's trying to, trying to get kills. He's probably also trying to recap. But in this case, it's much more important for him to hunt us. Uh, uh, hunt spawns because if he doesn't hunt spawns it doesn't just matter that we give up this point you have to think ahead we're going to be getting rolled on the next points as well because you're not doing your job so again it's all about a butterfly effect if he takes out the spawns um you know even if we lose this uh first point no big deal but you have to think ahead to backyards to town hall to church you're going to delay their spawns you're going to give us time to get set up on the next two points and because he didn't do that because they were not doing their job as spawn hunters and because we didn't have flank msps this uh this butterfly steamroll effect happens we lose both spawns and they just end up taking the whole match in a really really quick uh succession point after point they took crossroads in a couple minutes they took town hall and backyards instantly in a couple minutes and that's all because the first uh, 15 minutes of the game we just played really really poorly and we didn't get set up correctly so the first the first couple of minutes of every game pretty much dictate how the rest of the game is going to go for the most part Uh, this is the end of the match. We actually had stabilized here for over an hour. We held hospital, but it didn't really matter at the end because they just had so much momentum. And again, you see the same issue. They had not learned their lesson. We had lost multiple MSPs over here, bringing them through main areas. Or once again, this is just a lazy way of playing where you're not hiding your MSPs well. You're bringing them right within a main road, right behind the point because you want to reinforce fast. But you're not thinking long term that, hey, this is going to get found really fast. And once they wipe this, we're pretty much done and we lost the game. And that's exactly what happened. So this should have been set up on a flank somewhere so we can run down or even hidden back here behind them. So uh, pioneers can run down behind them and wipe their spawns and then buy us a lot of time. So uh, playing around spawns is actually the most essential component of winning in Postscriptum. This game is all about spawns. Once you understand that, you'll understand how this game functions at a high level. Okay, so this is another example. This is Andriel. You can see again, single, as I mentioned uh, in my first point, single fob setup and now we have two spawns which again are really really close in proximity they're really poorly set up the next point is actually down here we have no way of getting here in time they have all this open area where they can just bring up vehicles they can set up fobs and they're going to be there way before we are these spawns are can get taken out in really quick succession um, so we were trying to protect this fob uh, my squad was pretty much the only one on point uh, for a long time trying to protect this fob our rally went hot several times we were facing uh, two full squads by ourselves and we had a really really hard time holding this fob uh, for as long as we did of course we ended up losing the point um, you know of course, it doesn't have to be that the spawns are really, really close uh, to your point. As I mentioned before, the spawn being close is not necessarily a good thing, but you do want to have a hidden FOB somewhere much closer to point than this. This is pretty much out in the open on this map. It's just sitting there for the taking. Uh, you should have your FOB set up way ahead of time on point, well barricaded, well defended uh, to make it much harder for them to break in. This buys time for your team. And the other issue here is that we have three lines uh, of, of spawns that are all coming from the same direction. So all you need is a you can have just even two, three, four guys cutting off multiple squads that are running from the same direction because they see all your reinforced lines coming from the same areas you're all eventually running to the same point from the west side of the point so it's very easy to cut off whereas they have all this space around you to operate they can get spawns behind you they can come from the north they can come from the east and they can uh, pretty much take the point in a 360 fashion um, and our platoon commander, as you can see, is pretty much the only one hunting spawns by himself right now. So he he's the lone guy doing this, which is good. It's good that we had a platoon commander doing this, but he needs a lot more help. He needs the HE lodges. He needs the pioneers out there hunting in vehicles and looking for spawns. And if they're not doing their job, it just makes it a lot harder to win the game. And again, you might ask yourself, well, how would you um, fix the scenario? Well, you could just take one of these MSPs, jump in, bring it on behind them uh, where they don't expect it. And you could just start having troops flooding in behind them and taking out their spawns. And you pretty much just uh, sealed off this whole area because nobody's spawning here anymore. And then you force them into a corner, right? So the more uh, space you can take with your spawns, the better. Uh, you have to flank the offense. You have to flank the flankers. And if you're not flanking the flankers, it makes it very easy for them to break the point. 
So this is just to show the next point. As I mentioned, this FOB was already taken out. We have a really far off MSP, which serves no purpose. And it's going to go hot as soon as this next point uh, is live. And I brought this MSP from here all the way down here, just so we can have some spawns. But as you can see, it doesn't really matter at this point because people are already dying on the next point. The HG or the Logi team tried to get there and get set up and they were already on the point ahead of them. Um, and so this is part of the Zerging meta, which if... Uh, if you don't play good defense on the first few points, it just allows them to steamroll the rest of the match. So how you get set up uh, on the first few points and throughout the match really dictates the pace and how much you're able to defend on every um, successive point. So here I'm going to explain why does the offense steamroll. Uh, number one, it's a 360 concave effect. Uh, veteran teams set up 360 wide offensive spawns and they take out defensive spawns. Bad teams front line on offense. Good teams understand the power of 360 spawn wiping. Uh, number two, good veteran offensive logies get fob set up way before the cap is taken on the next points, allowing the entire team to teleport ahead to the next point. And number three, vehicle tents allow entire squads to fly to the next point before the defense is set up. Um, now, along with this, as I mentioned uh, in the previous points, it's setting up predictable spawns. So you can see our team did a really good job. We have a lot of veterans on this team. Pretty much this whole team was just veterans. And we set up a 360 concave, right? We have this MSP up here. We have this FOB back here. And we have and I brought my squad down here with this MSP. And so we have really, really wide flanks. And this allows us to concave in towards the point, which means we can eliminate any spawns along the way. So we can pretty much find any spawns here. We can find any spawns here. And we can find any spawns here. And you can tell that our platoon commander already anticipated that their spawn is going to be somewhere around 91. Again, because if you've played this many times, you know that they always place their MSPs and their FOBs there because it's very predictable. So you're going to see in this next clip, I'm going to find their, uh, their MSP, which I told my squad is probably going to be in these woods. So I start seeing lines of infantry that are running across here. You can see one, two, and I already understand at this point that there's a, a spawn set up around here somewhere. I don't fire because I don't want to give away our position. Why? Because I only care about wiping their spawn because I know once we wipe the spawn, it's pretty much game over. We're going to take this point in a couple minutes. So here it is. Just as predicted, close to 91, we, we find the MSP and we blow it up and then we end up taking the point. So you might ask yourself, well, again, what can they do in this scenario? when you're concaving in this fashion uh well ideally you want to have that fob set up closer to point you want to have it well barricaded to buy you time and then come in the flank spawns and come in your spawn hunters you have to have um spawns on the outside so you can take out their spawns and then you can bring them closer to point after you wipe their spawns but uh those first few minutes of getting a, a really uh, well sealed off uh, FOB is going to save you a lot of time so you can defend the point and then allows your tanks to come up and buys you time because obviously your uh, your spawn is going to be up here. It's going to take you a lot further to uh, get to point or it's going to be down here rather. Okay, so getting on to how to play a better defense. So number one, it's uh, get set up fast. First five minutes are crucial. A uh, quick FOB on point with a dedicated squad to protect it and build barricades around it. Number two, play a 360 perimeter defense. Make sure pioneers and ATs are spawn hunting off point. Number three, set up flank MSPs and FOBs to make it easier for pioneers, ATs, and HE logies to kill spawns and stop offensive reinforced lines. Uh, number four, don't let MSPs sit in base, replenish spawns fast. Uh, number five, logies have to have to have supplies ready at multiple points to get new FOBs up as soon as possible. Number six, spawn hunters have to be proactive and cut off routes. Number seven, take space. And uh, number eight, platoon commander plays a pseudo pioneer role. And this is an actual, uh, this is actually an OP defensive role, which I'm going to get into in a moment here and why I'm showing this in particular. So I actually want to touch on uh, point number six here. When you're getting set up at the beginning of games, uh, predicting the routes that they're going to take with their MSPs and their logies can actually buy your team a ton of time on defense, especially on first points. So for example, 
if you understand layers, if you understand patterns of, of behavior and uh, you have pattern recognition, you'll know that they tend to go through the same routes most of the time with their vehicles. They're not going to take a, a big flank around, right? So if you if you read the map, you know that most likely if they're going to take the Western approach, they're just going to come straight down the main road here. So as soon as the map starts, uh, one of the things I do as a pioneer, I just run as fast as I can to this intersection or as an AT and I just cut them off and kill their their MSP as they're trying to get across because I know that their goal is to try to get behind me now when we talk about flank spawns another reason why I use this as a good defensive uh, uh, video is because we have flank spawns set up over here right so Yes, we have our main FOB, which is really well protected. They built a lot of barricades around it. We have a tank on point. We have kind of an, a decent 360 perimeter defense, but you can also see that our pioneers are not out spawn hunting, which is not good. But our platoon commander is playing a pseudo pioneer role, which is excellent. This is a, a rare Nemo, somebody who I always see playing um, platoon commander and kudos to him he clearly understands the role really well he's not just sitting back on the fob here and waiting for information saying okay you find the, the spawns for me and tell me where they are and i blow them up no he goes out he has binos he has a good weapon he has a mobile vehicle and he's just able to drive around use his binos and he found the spawn for us and he wiped it himself because he can just bomb it from a dis from a safe distance without having to get close to it he can also see full lines of infantry and where they're running from and he can pretty much artillery the whole area so playing a pseudo pioneer is is a very very strong thing to do and it's actually why platoon commander is one of the uh, most powerful uh, roles in the game but again you can see they it, they're not anticipating as the offense to have this hidden MSP back here behind them where we can just spawn off of it with pioneers and take out their spawn. So we're essentially sealing off this whole northern area because we can just go here and start wiping all their spawns in the north. And this relegates them to getting pushed to this side of the map, which makes it easier for us to react and build a defensive wall along this line instead of being spread out and being attacked from all different areas. So one thing I also want to show here, I was um, a marksman in, in this particular game. And what I do is I spawn off this and I'm able to give uh, recon and information to my team and I'm able to cut off the entire uh, northwest uh, flank of the enemy. So I actually found their Logi team here and they were firing off an AT gun. So this is solely because I had that flank MSP available. If I didn't have that flank MSP available, I never would have found this area and I, I never would have been able to get behind them and start killing the reinforced lines. Now, also because of that, I was able to find out that they were spawning here in this barn. So I basically made my way all the way down here. I was killing their, I killed their Logi team on the AT gun. And I, I moved up here. I was killing infantry from behind. They didn't expect that I would be here. And then I got here and I found one of their main spawns on this barn uh, as a result of this flank MSP. So again, no flank MSP, no butterfly effect. I never would have been here. I never would have been able to get in behind them and give recon to my team. Okay, so this is another match. Uh, this time it's on Vigo. Now, I was a marksman again on this match. Uh, this was the other day, actually. And what I did was, um, you know, most of the time when people bring up MSPs uh, on Vigo, on uh, the standard defensive layer, which is the road bridge, they take the MSPs and they just bring them right here lazily behind factory and behind the barn here they expect you to do that so you have to think ahead of what they expect you to do and do the unexpected and if you look at our defense here this is just a perfect defense as perfect as you can get obviously it's really hard to get in flank spawns but um ideally the second best position to have aside from flank spawns is to have spawns set up uh, along the wings in every area so you can cut off all the different points that they're going to come from so you can see here our logi team is really really solid they built a fob for themselves so they can keep uh respawning and making it hard for them to ever get across this area so we pretty much as a team already know that hey this whole area up here in the north they're never going to come from here because they they're going to mine off this area uh, they're going to build barricades on the bridge and they're going to make it really hard now again look at our platoon commander pseudo pioneer rule really good he's able to use binos to see if anybody's here in these woods get in behind them uh, bomb them artillery them so really really strong setup over here now i brought an msp up 
and I hid it back here behind the mansion. And the reason I did that was because they got in early into these woods. As you can see, there's a marker here. We had a tank here. I had actually died a few times here because I took this FOB. I flanked over here. I was looking in the woods to see what they have, and I found some guys running through here. Um, so I said, hey, you know what? I died. Let me bring an MSP up. I'll sacrifice some time. It doesn't matter. I don't care about the KD. What I care about is the team winning. And I took an MSP, brought it up to mansion. I run into the woods, and I'm about to find a rally because of this flank MSP that I set up. So we have two perfect flank MSPs. We have defenders on the um, on the little um, uh, bridge over here, the pontoon. Uh, we have the Logi team defending up here. And then we have our main defense over here with a really well-guarded fob behind it. So I spawn off that MSP. First thing I find is a rally right there. So I'm going to give a lot of recon just as a result of putting that MSP back there. Now I see an MSP drive up, I killed the driver, and then I let them know, hey, there's an MSP that just sacrificed itself onto the point, and our Pioneer blew it up. And then the next thing that I find is a repair station, which means there's probably an FOB nearby. So I was able to kill an MSP, I was able to kill a rally, and I was able to find the repair station just because of that little flank MSP that I put there. Instead of putting the, the MSP in this predictable area, which is here, if I just put it up here, we wouldn't have found any of this. I would have just ran straight to point and they would have been able to come up from different flanks on the wings and they could have just seen us running straight down and they would say, hey, you know where their spawns are? It's right behind factory. It's right behind barn. It's right behind the townhouse. It's in the north. It's really easy to see those spawns. So when you set up these these wing spots, you, you give yourself a lot more space to take away their spawns and their space and make it a lot harder for them to uh, get on point. Okay, so in, these la in this last clip, I'm actually playing uh, Platoon Commander, and I just want to show why it's so important to play a uh, proactive, offensive Platoon Commander when you're on defense, instead of just sitting back in the safety of a FOB uh, on the defensive side and not really accomplishing anything because you're just waiting for callouts. This was actually my first time playing Platoon Commander. Um, I, I jumped in late into the match. I only played about 15 minutes, and I ended up uh, getting one of the highest uh, kills in this game uh, because I was, I was on the back lines watching everything. So opening up the map here, we can see their main is over here. Here's our main. And this is on Belmolin. Um, now, they found an MSP back here. They reported it to me. I'm going to bomb this MSP. Now, what I did as Platoon Commander, I didn't only... Um, I, I died here earlier, coming up here. So I spawned in. I took an MSP myself instead of relying on somebody else to do it. And I drove it all the way up here. So I set up a flank MSP for us because they often come through these this uh, wooded area onto the point. Um, and that allows us to get in behind them and flank them and get behind their spawns and take them out. So instead of having all of our spawns concentrated in one arc over here behind the point, thinking that it's safe close to main, that makes it very predictable. Uh, we set up a flank spawn, um, just as I mentioned earlier. So it's all about flank spawns. Yeah, it's good to have defensive spawns, but you should also have flank spawns as well. Now, uh, me being back here, uh, it gave me so much intel. I found a fob over here in the woods that I had bombed. Um, I killed the Logi truck when I first drove up through this way. The Logi truck was trying to come out of, uh, of Maine. He got to about this area trying to set up. I actually killed the driver and then I bombed his uh, uh, fully loaded um, Logi truck. So I, I bought our team a lot of time. I didn't get uh, allow them to get their FOB set up. And then once I got back here, uh, when I died, I had respawned walk, uh, and walked all the way back to uh, my vehicle. And you can see what I'm about to find just by being back here playing a pseudo offensive role. So I bomb uh, on 11, uh, an MSP. But to my surprise, I'm about to find something else. Just because I'm back here. I'm going to RD that area. Oh, and looky here. We have an MSP coming back, changing directions to a different area because they were having a hard time breaking the defense. So I killed the driver. 
and now I just got us an MSP. So we just took out two MSPs, which makes it pretty much impossible for them. I had taken out an FOB, took out an MSP by bombing it, and now I'm about to take out the second MSP. So at this point, all they have left is just rallies. Um, and that's the reason why we won this game handedly. Um, we did lose the first point, but they pretty much couldn't break uh, the second point at all because we were so well set up. So as I mentioned throughout all these points, um, there are many ways to play good defense. Uh, you can't just chalk it up to uh, the devs and uh, the Zerging meta just being overpowering. Um, when you play with good teams, when you play with veterans, and when you understand how the spawn system works, when you understand up, uh, understand how to set up good spawns, uh, and when you have a good logic team, you can definitely play uh, a good defense. And more often than not, I actually see the defense winning quite a lot when it has good players on it. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you only need good players to play defense it's just important for these types of videos to come out so we can help new players to understand uh how to play defense at a high level so we can make the the game better for everybody so if you like this video please feel free to share like and subscribe and join me for the next one